Welcome to the first ever Tuned Tuner Car Shootout. We decided that this year, rather than simply drive and show the cars, we'd put them head to head on a closed road and a racetrack. We brought five tuned cars between thirty and three hundred thousand dollars, and we're gonna duke it out to find which tuner did it best. I'll be testing how the cars drive on the street with a closed section of the stunning Highway 74 south of Palm Springs, while Rolex GT champion Lee Keen will push the cars to their limits at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway, a 2.7 mile, 17 turn road course. Lee and I will then rank the cars based on style, value, drivability on the road and at the limit, and most importantly, lap time. For all the categories but lap time, there can be no ties, meaning we rank the cars in each category and assign points according to rank. For this competition, there are only two rules. The car must be street legal, registered and insured for road use, and the car must run a DOT road legal set of tires. And now, our winner with the fastest lap time of the competition, this 2007 Porsche 911 Turbo by BBI Autosport of Huntington Beach, California. We couldn't have a tuner car shootout without inviting the subject of our first ever episode of Tuned, BBI Autosport. They have brought out something very special to this competition. This is a 2007 Porsche 911 Turbo, which has been converted to rear wheel drive, but that's just the beginning. It spins to 9,000 RPM and makes over 600 wheel horsepower on its lowest boost setting. It has a Hollinger six-speed sequential gearbox out of a 911 Cup car. This is by far the gnarliest 911 I've ever driven. Climbing a mountain in BBI's latest, maddest creation. This car is a tuner's dream and I'll tell you why. Because it's for a dream customer. When you take a tuning shop like BBI with its background in racing Porsches and a customer gives you a literal blank check and says, build me what you build yourself, that is a dream project right there. This car left the factory with 420 all-wheel drive horsepower, it now makes 600 horsepower to the wheels and only the rear wheels. The engine is a 3.8 liter unit based on the 911 GT3 motor, but with turbos added. They're not huge turbos, they're designed for a wide power band, but they're on low boost for our test and we're talking about 600 wheel horsepower. The owner of this car, the commissioner of the build, owns McLaren's, Ferraris, most of today's extreme supercars, and he asked for something that was the rawest, most visceral experience that money could buy, or in this case, build. And so this engine in the back is very similar to Jeff Swartz Pike's Peak winning engine. In fact, it's almost exactly the same. <laughs> Because it's based on the GT3 engine, it actually revs to 8,500 RPM, even though the tack stops at eight. And you may notice how I changed gear. It's a $30,000 Hollinger straight cut, six speed sequential gearbox. And that is what makes this feel like a race car on the street. To drive it, you use the clutch for first and second gear, and you use the clutch for all your downshifting. But above second gear, you upshift without the clutch and without lifting off the throttle. In fact, you have to stay on the power, otherwise the car will get very, very angry with you. And when you do shift it, you get fire. Like, like real, proper fire. It cuts the timing, but it doesn't cut the fuel, so you have better throttle response. The fuel ignites in the exhaust, and it shoots fire out the back. Oh, but sometimes it just it makes terrible sounds when you shift. 
if you're not on it, and I mean really on it, the gearbox can get a little bit unhappy. The car has the full Street Cup chassis kit, which is this roll bar back here. Completely change suspension geometry with cup car front fenders so you can fit a 10 inch wide tire at the front. Grip for days. It has JRZ shocks, which is a very high end track spec unit. But believe it or not, this isn't built as a race car. This was built as a Canyon car. So here we are. On the aero front, they've got a GT3 front bumper, a GT2 rear bumper, and a GT3 RS rear wing, which is, it's all Porsche factory stuff. By mixing and matching a little bit, you end up with a car that has a very aggressive, yet cohesive look. It doesn't look super tunery. It looks like it could have come out of the factory. Open road. All right, really, really quick, really quick. Oh, the brakes really just shove me into the harnesses. It feels so light. It's not a particularly light car by Porsche standards. It's 600 pounds heavier than a cup car, but it's only a couple of seconds a lap off a cup car's pace in part thanks to the Hoosier DOT legal slick tires. Downsides, there are a couple. By race car standards, it's fairly compliant. By street car standards, <laughs> it's pretty stiff. If I was on Laguna Seca right now, the car would be right at home. We think by removing the front drivetrain, that it would get super, super sketchy. That's sort of true, it, it, it might. Certainly not at road speeds, you have to be going track pace. <laughs> but this thing has a very advanced racing-based traction control system. It's not the stock system, that's gone. It uses standalone traction control, and it's a really, really advanced system which should really, really help you keep things in line. And without it, I'd imagine this card would earn that Widowmaker nickname that we all simultaneously love and are deathly afraid of. But to put this much turbocharged power through the rear wheels only of a 911 and have it be this responsive, this easy to drive and not, not particularly scary. Magnificent. Even the sequential shifter, which I thought was a pain in the ass just 10 minutes ago, is really growing on me. Oh boy. This is a very special thing, this car. It should be special because it's by far the most expensive car we have here. How much, you say? You're looking at about 250, 250 grand. Now that does include a used 997 turbo, but that's nothing to sneeze at. 250 grand could buy you a Ferrari 458 or a McLaren, but I don't know, man. If you wanted to be the rawest dog at the ball, BMW may have the patent on ultimate driving machine, but on a strictly factual basis, I think they BBI has the beat. You can't possibly imagine what it's like to drive this thing. Plate or no plate, this feels like a race car. The sheer violence and acceleration when boost kicks in, it's as wild a ride as I've ever seen. With its racing clutch, straight cut gears, it's a handful on the street. So we're only giving it a six out of 15 for drivability, but it looks the jam, so it gets a full five points for style. I can't wait to see what Lee can do with this thing on the track.
here in the BBI Turbo Monster. I don't even know what to call this thing. It's a monster, but it's not. The Porsche, no surprise, was my favorite car. I can't believe this is a street car. The really impressive thing was the aftermarket traction control system. That kind of power, rear wheel drive, you need something to kind of help you out. But it wasn't too intrusive at all. It did exactly what I wanted it to. So that complete package was really impressive. A lot of grip, a lot of power, a lot of brakes. Just a beast, a lot of everything. But it puts it all together. It makes use of all of it. was kind of uh, one of the most more extreme builds. It also ran flawlessly, had zero issues. I actually had the air conditioner on at one point. The chassis, stability through the shocks, geometry, everything is right on point. I mean, this thing is really a rocket, but it's not scary to drive. They call it the Widowmaker, the 930. I mean, they, those cars are super hairy to drive. You get that car actually without that traction control system, I think would be a couple of seconds slower just because managing that wheel spin would be nearly impossible. Second or third gear, you're trying to manage 700 horsepower just to the rear tires. You know, that's difficult to do. I love the balance. The front is always there for me. Sometimes in a 911, you really got to work with the front to get it to turn. I think the traction control makes that car. All the other pieces come together in the right way, but that traction control is key to that whole setup. Should we really be surprised that the BBI Autosport Porsche 911 Turbo won the track competition outright? Probably not. It has the best power to weight ratio, the stickiest tires, the biggest wing, and Lee Keen, our racing driver, has won two GT championships behind the wheel of a 911. Lee put on an absolute clinic for us at the track, popping, cracking, and flaming his way to a 1 minute 53 second lap time, the third fastest streetcar lap ever recorded at this track, earning BBI Autosport a full 50 points by setting the benchmark for the track portion of our shootout. Lee also awarded it 12 out of 15 points for drivability at the limit, even though I personally have no idea how he set a lap that fast. On the road, the Hollinger sequential gearbox made driving in traffic and around town very difficult, and the car doesn't really like stop and go. But the power is insane, it feels like a real race car, the seats are comfy, and the AC cranks, so it's not all bad. I awarded it 6 out of 15 for road manners. As far as style goes, I think this thing looks tough as nails, purposeful, and yet pretty. We unanimously gave it top marks there with a full 5 points out of 5 for style. Value is calculated by taking the lap time and factoring in the cost of the car as compared to the Mustang, the cheapest car on track. This Porsche is by far the most expensive car here, but it's also the fastest. The dollars spent per second isn't as good as it gets, but it still got itself a 9 out of 15 for value, even at 300 grand. At the end of the day, nothing could keep up with this Porsche's pace, its looks, or its war cannon exhaust note. It was the lightest car and the most powerful, and it made all of us happy to be in its presence. At the end of the shoot every day, this is what I chose to drive back to the hotel. And with a total score of 82 points out of 100, the BBI Autosport Porsche 997 Turbo is the overall winner of the Tuned Tuner Shootout. It won our lap time and style categories outright, and even at a very high cost of entry, it still returned a strong value proposition given its insane pace. <laughs>